And away we go. It is the BCJ podcast right here on BearcatJournal.com. I'm Chad Brendel. Joined, as always, by David Simone. And as always, this show brought to you by our good friends at the Holy Grail. Make sure if you are downtown checking out a Reds game or uh, even better yet, it's almost NFL season. So if you're down there checking out the Bengals, make sure you stop by the number one establishment, the number one sports bar in the Cincinnati area and have yourself a good time, get some food, have a couple drinks and enjoy being downtown at the Holy Grail. All right, let's get this show on the road. We have a special guest today and uh, this is one I've never seen Dave more excited for a guest. (laughs) We've had some heavy hitters, but Dave's, Dave's ready to go on this one. Well, I mean, we can do the intro and then then we'll get right into it. We are joined by Jason Shears. He is the uh, the publisher, right? Publisher, owner, everything, do everything guy like me. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Of wildcatauthority.com. It is on the 24-7 Sports Network. They cover the Arizona Wildcats. And uh, Dave has been looking forward to this all day. So, I, I, Dave, I turn it over to you. I will chime in if necessary, but Dave is, uh, since Jason, I'll just, I'll clue you in. Since everybody is a realignment expert these days, we have dubbed Dave our realignment, the Bearcat Journal realignment expert. And we'll actually, even during shows, just reintroduce him if we're going to start talking realignment. As like a special guest. Yeah, special guest, David Simone. He's, He's worked here for like 10 years. (laughs) <laughs> so we like to have fun with it uh it, it seems same as kind of you do as well um it's 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 serious there's a lot of silliness to it and you can make yourself go insane uh if you don't have a little uh of fun with it at times which is how we like to approach it as well yeah i, I mean it's it's uh it's new to me, <laughs> so <laughs> my first realignment. But it's it's wild, man. It's social media, all that. It is. We're it we're is. like uh, you know seven year vets in this in this thing. Grizzled veterans so, in realignment. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> but thanks again for joining us. Uh, you know, first, just want to start out. You were at Pac twelve Media Day, covering Arizona, obviously. Just kind of take us there as far as like what the vibe was because everyone was kind of waiting to hear if what Commissioner Klyovkov was going to say. He obviously had some things to say. We'll get into that. But was it, you know, I don't know if you've covered other Pac-12 media or Pac-12 media days in the past, but I'm just kind of just trying to picture like, was it not somber, but was it like a lot of fake pats on the back and hugs? or, Or do you think there was like a tinge in the room of like, something actually might be going on. Yeah, it was probably a little bit of both. Like you're, you're talking to ADs and, and all that, and you know everyone's either lying or, or kind of, you know, softening the blow of everything that's going on. And um, you kind of got to figure out what to believe and what not to believe. But there's that giant elephant in the room. And every, I mean, it, it, you couldn't avoid it, right? Like everyone knows about it. George Kolakov obviously didn't avoid it. And so you're listening and the coaches just want to talk about football and everyone else wants to talk about realignment, which kind of makes for a a kind of a a weird environment. But it it, towards the end of the day, it it turned focus to football and all that. But uh, it was definitely one of the more stranger media days to open things up. What was kind of the reaction when he, you know, basically started taking shots at Brett Yormark, the big 12 kind of like, was everyone just like, whoa, this is how it's going to be today? Or, or you know, how did that go? Yeah, I mean, that was the big question going in. Like, would he go on the offensive or the defensive? And even if he went on the offensive, I, I don't think anyone knew that he would basically call the Big 12 out. Like, maybe he would do it kind of subtly or, you know, without mentioning them by name, but he went all in. And I think when he made that quote, that basically, uh, I think it was like, we haven't decided if we're going shopping there. That was the one where it's like, oh, okay, <laughs> well, in that case, it's it's on now. And so um, I, I think people were maybe a little taken aback by how aggressive he was. And then he kind of went back on it and said, oh, I want to bring collegiality back to everything. And it's like, well, you're saying that. And then you're taking shot after shot at the Big 12. And 
the other aspect was that if you noticed, there were no shots at the Big Ten. That, that, yeah, that uh, was going to be kind of the next thing we talked about. Was like it was like he was punching down at the Big Twelve, but wouldn't dare say anything about the Big Ten. And he used the term like trying to destabilize the Pac-12. And I'm sitting here going, wait a second. The two teams that your conference wouldn't be destabilized if two teams didn't go to the Big Ten. That had nothing to do with the Big 12. And kind of, I guess, maybe towards the beginning of his comments, he's painting almost like a Pollyannish, like harking back to the old days of college sports, but then says he's going to go shopping at the Big 12. So it's like you're being like a hypocrite in in one, one comment, basically. It was – really obvious that he was scared of the Big Ten. And rightfully so. I mean, he knows the Big Ten can make two phone calls in the Pac-12. Sure. And so he wasn't going to touch that. Like, he was, he's not coming at the Big Ten and pissing them off at all. But the Big 12, it's a little more difficult. So he probably figures, look, I'll take some shots at the Big 12, make myself and the conference look a little bit stronger. But, yeah, like you mentioned, the Big Ten is the one that took schools. They are the ones that destabilized the Pac-12, the Big 12 is, is doing what it's supposed to do. It hasn't really done anything yet. It's just talking. But the Big 10 actually went forward with it, and he didn't really have anything to say. He went more and kind of went after USC and UCLA a little bit by saying their fan bases are upset, and mostly UCLA with that. But, yeah. um, you know, yeah, I mean, he he went he, – he's not touching the Big 10, and I don't really blame him at the end of the day. He knows what the, the Big 10 can do to that conference if they sure. want. Sure. Just anything anything else that you kind of picked up on, whether it was Arizona related or just conference related in whether it was listening to other coaches, your ADs, or just talking to other media members while you were there? The only thing that caught my eye was usually in the past, pretty much every AD has been there. And I would say this time about half. Uh, you know, the Washington AD wasn't there. Arizona's AD wasn't there. Oregon's was there. Utah's was there. But there were multiple ADs that for whatever reason uh, weren't at the event and others were, and some of them that were just didn't really want to do interviews or, you know, kind of did the off record sure. stuff that you clearly know where it came from. But that was something that was kind of interesting to me was that not every AD seemingly wanted to kind of attack this thing head on. Right. So something that kind of, you know, for those that aren't familiar, you had a nice little back and forth with John Canzano of the Oregonian today. <laughs> but, and the part that, caught my attention the most and we'll get into this because it happens tomorrow the pac-12's exclusive rights window with espn closes tomorrow and as of now best i know they're not going to agree because i'm i'm imagining this is me just being an observer the offer is going to be low because they're not negotiating against anyone else and so why would the pac-12 sign that but then when with you two today, he wrote that, that, that the ADs or schools or whatever haven't even seen any figures. And I'm like, that cannot possibly be true. So enlighten us a little bit about like where you've heard things are in that stage. And do you agree? Like there's no way the exclusive window can close tomorrow and no one in the conference knows what ESPN is offering. No, it's a flat out lie. And like, and I, and I called him out later because Stuart Mandel and Wilner and two guys that even Pac-12 fans have gone after. But both those guys have said that ADs have seen numbers. I mean, it, it, there, there's some initial number. They may not like the initial number. Um, I don't know. You know, I reported that the initial number was 24 and a half million per team, basically, for tier one. And I don't know if they've seen another number since then, but I know they've at least seen one number. I mean, it, it just makes sense. It's a it's an exclusive negotiating window and that's what's going on. And so they've seen a number and uh, my guess is the number was low on purpose. I, I think it'll wind up being bigger than that 24 and a half, but no one's moving into the big 10 moves. Right. And that's, that's where all eyes are. And the easiest way to explain it is if ESPN has a large chunk of the big 10 programming, Arizona or not Arizona, the PAC 12 is in trouble because that means that ESPN may not want to spend that money on the Pac-12. And right now, even though they're not going to agree to it in the window, ESPN is going to be at the table until it's not, basically. And so right. if ESPN doesn't get the Big Ten, I think there's a good chance this conference the, the, being the Pac-12 survives. If they do and there's a large chunk, it's going to get really, really interesting. Yeah, I mean, the Big Ten or the ESPN obviously now has 
or not now, now does, but it actually doesn't start for a couple more years, has the SEC, has their deal with the ACC. The Fox is likely going to take a higher percentage of the Big Ten than they even had before. So like you're saying, it's hard for me to imagine the Big Ten is just totally out of, or ESPN is just totally out of the Big Ten game. Uh, so but like you were saying, like how much do they take and what does that then do to – to the Pac-12, are any other networks itching to get into the Pac-12 market, or is are they kind of just kind of like you said, hoping and praying that ESPN gets shut out and that they need that content? I think the focus is on ESPN and a streaming partner right now. The, how so what, how or- much like they would be the first ones to kind of dive in with the like? Are we talking a small percentage, or are we talking like? Put a pretty hefty amount of content on a, on a streaming platform. From what I've heard, it's it's pretty hefty. The you know most people have told me that he has basically told the the ads and the presidents they're going to have to get creative. And he has a background with Hulu, and he has a background in streaming, and so they're trusting that. I mean, and he even said at Media Day, there's going to be something where they get creative, and that could be folding the Pac-12 networks and giving ESPN Plus you know, the Olympic sports and all the smaller sports and, and stuff like that and giving them basketball, football, or, you know, not making it a major ESPN deal. There's Amazon, there's Apple, um, which I would be surprised if that happens, but I'm sure that's, that's some kind of contact. But I believe that one of the ways that George Kalakoff thinks the conference can survive is by going to a, a heavily streamed platform. What has been the reaction to that from kind of Pac-12 fans? One being that it would be kind of the first major conference to go deep down that road. I mean, like UC and the AAC and even going to the Big 12 initially. We'll have, we've had stuff on ESPN Plus for several years, but, but nothing like going to Hulu or Apple or Netflix. Is, do you think that is looked at positively or negatively from just, just from the fans perspective, not taking out the, how much they're going to pay the schools. What do the fans think about that? I think people got to realize that like the PAC 12 network is so bad that the only way is up. Like it can't get worse than the access that the PAC 12 right. has given people. So even if it's streaming, like it's going to be better. And Kolokov has said, and I believe him that the goal is to make sure you can watch every Pac-12, everything, you know, basically in one way or another. Because right now you can't. Like there's people that still, you know, with certain providers, you can't watch the Pac-12 networks. It's it's insane. Not everyone has access to it. And so uh, the goal will be to get it on a streaming platform where everyone has access to it. And I'm sure we'll probably have to pay a little bit more money. But, you know, the pitch will be you pay a little bit more, any, more money and you could actually watch the Pac-12. And in the whole network, it just isn't run well, like, Even media day, the first hour and a half, all they did was replay the opening speech by Kalakoff. So even though there were live coaches, they weren't playing them. And so USC and UCLA lead the conference. There's no trace of it on the Pac-12 network, no reaction, nothing. And it's just not run well, but it is something that they believe has value if they were to say sell it to ESPN and kind of fold that coverage because it's all the Olympic sports and uh, the historical stuff and stuff, things like that. And get value there but it's it's such a bad setup right now that i think pac-12 fans are kind of like whatever as long as we can watch it it'll be better than what we have now right obviously every conference has their guys in the media that carry water for them so this this is not anything new but that being said i have never seen anything like what some of the guys out west have been doing where they've written more words on a subject, on a conference that they also claim has no markets, no values, as and is inferior to the Pac-12. So I'm just trying to juxtapose those two things. If the Big 12 is so inferior to the Pac-12 and all these different things, why are they spending so much time talking about it? Well, I think something that people also realize is like, if the Pac, without naming names, if the Pac-12 goes away, there's a lot of jobless writers because it's their job to cover the Pac-12. Oh, sure. I mean, it's survival. <laughs> so, right. But, and, 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 I think that's yeah. part of it. It's like, I'm going to try my hardest to prove, but it, it is weird because, you know, there's a lot of Pac-12 writers in unnamed sources that are saying the Big 12, like today an article came out, the Big 12 isn't a threat at all. It's like, so why are you writing an article on it? Clearly, there's something that 
has led you to write an article about the Big 12 not being a threat. Like Big 10 writers and ADs aren't coming out and saying other conferences aren't a threat because we know they're not a threat. And so it, it's just, it's a, it's a strange situation. And to me, it shows just the opposite. It tells me, you know what? No, the Big 12 is a threat. Otherwise, why are we even discussing it here? Well, Klyovkov, I mean, in his comments at Media Day, he basically confirmed that there's conversations taking place between some entities of the Big 12 and some entities of Pac-12 schools. And, you know, he boasted that I've seen the text messages and everything. And I'm like, these, those are all just, to me, they're all just comments for Twitter and to make Oregon State and Washington State happy. Yeah, I mean, again, I, well, I don't care if I accuse someone, but whenever you see the unnamed ADs <laughs> that are saying this conference is great and we're healthy and we're all in it together, it's Oregon State and Washington State because they literally have no choice. They're going to sign whatever is put in front of them to keep the conference alive because if not, they're headed to the Mountain West. Like, they're they're in obscurity right away. And, and so those quotes, they're, they're basically BS. And if you notice, like, the Arizona AD hasn't come out and said anything, not a thing. And there's a reason for that. The Colorado AD, I think, had a statement, but it was pretty weak. Uh, Rob Mullins was honest, and he's like, yeah, we're looking at the best option for us. So you can tell by the ADs and, and, that are coming out and saying stuff and which ones aren't the, the real interest there. Like Arizona's AD isn't going to say anything anytime soon because he's looking at the Big 12 and, and other possible options. Yeah, I just like I don't remember if it, I think it was Wilner. He was on a, a tirade a while ago about that the Big Twelve might be stable, but that's because nobody wants their schools or whatever. And I'm like, well, if the choice is dying or not dying, I'll just pick the not dying. Like, so great, we're stable, and nobody wants our schools. But if one or two schools leaves the Pac-12, the whole thing's dead. So which I mean. Why is that something to necessarily be boastful about? And that's what we're going to talk with the new TV deal, like whenever it comes up. If, if Washington and Oregon aren't willing to sign something that locks them in to the Pac-12 for a quite a while, Arizona's not signing it. I'm very confident in saying that. Utah's not signing it. So if they're not willing to sign it, it's you're not going to see a TV deal, or at least you're not going to see anything that locks these schools in, which means they could leave at any time. And that's probably Kalakov's biggest challenge isn't necessarily the money. It's getting these schools. Cause if you're Oregon and Washington, why are you agreeing to a 10 year deal? If you think the big 10 is going to bite you in three years, right? It, you're just not going to do it. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's the biggest obstacle right now. The big 10 kind of set precedent with their last TV deal of going on the shorter end. And I think Rob Mullins even mentioned it, like, you know, maybe looking at like a five or six year type of deal, which, no one's going to sign a grant of rights for that short of a period of time. Yeah, I my guess is that if they sign anything, it's going to be a five-year deal with a relatively decent buyout to leave the conference, if you're in Oregon or Washington. And that way, you could say you kept the conference alive and you try to make Oregon and Washington happy enough for the next five years. Right. But again, it's the other schools. They're not anxious to sign something like that. So hey, Here's my favorite okay. part real quick. Um these guys continue to write these articles talking down to everyone in the big 12 and then throwing their hands up like, Oh, the, these big 12 people in my mentions, like what did you think was going to happen? You're doing nothing but trying to crap on these people. You think they're just going to sit there and be like, yeah, they're not, used to, they're not used to dealing with fan bases that give a shit. No, that's what it is. Like, and, and I said this before, like pac 12 fan bases that care are very limited. Like Cal Athletics, they don't care. You know, it, and, and there's other Stanford Athletics. It's, it's whatever. The Big 12, and that's something that I think Pac-12 presidents have to look at too. They're, they're all passionate fan bases, right? And so if you say something like, if I tweet right now, talk shit about the SEC, I'm going to get annihilated on Twitter, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and, the, and, and the Big 12, like if I say something good, which I did earlier, I'm going to get a bunch of new followers and stuff like that because they're passionate fan bases in the Pac-12. It's just not there. Like there's a couple, but the passion of other conferences aren't there. And, and that's what's cost, costing the conference is that a good chunk of the presidents don't value football like other conferences do. And you're seeing it in the fan bases. But it's like, yeah, if, if I talk crap about your school, you're going to come at me. And rightfully so. I get it. Yeah. I and mean, like last year, 
you know, it wasn't everybody, but when Tech and we weren't even in the conference yet, but to Texas and Oklahoma leave, and the national narrative was, uh, oh well, like they, you know, su- such is life, and and now it's like USC and UCLA leave, and a lot of people are like, oh my God, we have to do whatever we can to save the Pac-12, and and traditional Big 12 fans are like, wait a second, last year you guys were dancing on our graves. And now you're tr- you're trying to save this conference, and you get mad at us when you talk down to us, and we stick up for our programs. Like it, it's ve- I think you said. I mean, it's very like pot calling the kettle black. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna in college, passionate college fan bases are always going to support their team, even when they know it's wrong. <laughs> they support their team because right. I mean, that's college athletics, like that's how they roll. And it's like you know, like you mentioned, like the Pac-12 said no to the Big 12. The Big 12 couldn't even, wouldn't even be a thing if the Pac-12 made the right decision. And now it's like the Pac-12 is dying and the Big 12 sitting there like, ha ha, you guys, you guys screwed up. Well, it's like, yeah, of course we're going to remind you once in a while. So isn't recently- that part of the narrative that like, isn't that part of why I think the Pac-12 is kind of acting like this is because they're trying to, to posture as we, you weren't even good enough for us. And, and the Big 12 is going, okay, well, Come and get your whooping. Like yeah. he thinks thou doth protest too much. <laughs> yeah, you we weren't good enough for you. That's cool. But when, when you need us, let us know. Yeah. Otherwise, like you're if your conference is gonna go away and you're gonna make bad decisions, we're cool with that because of what you did to us. So where does Arizona specifically, from what you've been able to gather, you know? As of today, who the hell knows what's going on? Like, where do you think Arizona sits in all of this, their feelings, like what they would like to happen, but what they also maybe think they might have to do? I mean, look, in an ideal world, I do believe the Pac-12 presidents, when they stay, they want to stay in the Pac-12. Because what that means to them is they've gotten the 40, 45 billion, you know, whatever it is to make it feasible to stay in the Pac-12. Uh, but if they don't get it, it's every man for himself. Like if they, if we're talking in December, which is very possible and th- there's no deal, you're going to see movement. Like Arizona is going to leave and other schools are probably going to leave. And I don't know what's going to happen with Oregon and Washington and all that. But w- where we're headed is that these schools, like we mentioned before, there's value in stability. And if the Pac-12 doesn't have a deal, which is very possible going into the new year, these presidents are going to say, we need to get into another conference now because we can only wait so much longer. And that may even happen before the, the new year. But right. it, I mean, there, there's no deal coming from what I understand. Uh, I've been told by a few people that there may not be a deal for the rest of the year. And so what's going to happen if you're Arizona and the Big 12 calls and says, you need to make a decision now on January 1st, you have a heck of a decision to make. And, and I think that Arizona in that case would probably lean towards going to the Big 12. Right, because, I mean, the exclusive window ends tomorrow, and I believe Klyovkov or someone associated with the league said that it could be a, a full calendar year before a new, a new deal is, is fully agreed to. And, and my thinking is, like, is if you were in such a rush to open up your window to try to save your conference, you should know whether or not you've got something good waiting for you because the longer it goes, it's not all of a sudden – Someone's not going to just show up waving, you know, six billion dollars six months from now. Like you're going to know fairly soon after the Big Ten stuff is all flushed out. Like who's got the money and how much are they willing to give us? So if that doesn't become public or get finalized for several months, you can't can't believe that whatever the deal ends up being is going to be good. Yeah, I think once the the, the Big Ten deal happens. I think that's when the the Pac-12 presidents and athletic directors are going to start taking it really, really seriously. Some are taking it seriously now, but I think it's going to say, you know, especially like I mentioned, if ESPN is a big part of that, it wouldn't surprise me if you see much more talk about movement because these schools need to save their athletic departments. Right. right? And financially, that's that's what we're talking about. At the end of the day, we can talk about passion and all that, and, and, and it's great, but it comes down to money. And, and if the money's not there – these schools have to find a place where the money and the stability is. What does the Arizona fan base want? Arizona fan base is a basketball fan base. So they are gung ho for the big 12. I mean, they really are because like you're talking a conference, you know, just at the top Baylor, like 
Arizona, now that USC and UCLA are gone, in three years, the, the marquee game is going to be Oregon and Utah. And, the, and it's just it's it's just not there. And now all of a sudden you go to the Big 12 and you're talking Baylor, Kansas on, you know, on major networks. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's very similar to, I mean, Cincinnati has had a great run, but it is, you know, it's still, I would still consider it a basketball school. I mean, and we're obviously excited for football, but like it's almost equally equal excitement for the basketball matchup. So I just yeah, don't I, think Arizona fans trust the Pac-12. I mean, this is the same conference where, you know, when Sean Miller was the coach years ago, the, the refs admitted to putting a bounty on his head to get him, like, ejected <laughs> from games and stuff. And this fan base still hasn't forgot, forgiven them. And, you know, we turn on, like I mentioned, the, the Pac-12 network. You're turning it on at 10 o'clock at night to watch Oregon State versus Arizona in basketball or football. And it's like, what? You know, it, it becomes it, – it's – it's time for a change, I, I think. And I'm not speaking for the whole fan base. I know sure. there's a lot of traditionalists out there that are, you know, pack 10 or die. And it's like, you know, but the ones that want to go to the Big 12 are doing it because they want a change. And, and they're generally afraid that if Arizona doesn't make the move, it'll be a Mountain West school in five years. Well, it's definitely, you know, you have, and we've experienced right. it because Cincinnati's been in six conferences in my life. And you have these, you know, Pac-12, Pac-10 Pac has been basically the same thing forever. So you have fans that just don't understand that teams move around. Like, it, it happens, and it's not the end of the world, and, you know, you can still have successful programs and everything. I did want to get you out on quite one question, final question, basketball-related. Since the Mal Invitational uh, <laughs> bracket has come out, UC and Arizona will play in the, the first round. Give us a quick scout on the Wildcats this year. Uh, you know, they they lost three guys to the NBA. They went out and, and they replaced them um, with guys that they feel are, are good. And and one guy, you know, Texas transfer, Courtney Ramey, he's going to start. They're really high on him. They returned Kirk Kreese at point guard, Pella Larson at forward. Umar Balo was the guy that played that they like. But it really comes down to, to a lot of the success will be based off the, the few transfers that they got. A guy like Ramey, they got Cedric Henderson from Campbell, who they like a lot. Went in Europe because that's what Arizona does now. <laughs> They're going to Europe for a lot of guys. Henry Vasar is a guy that was really good, but um, I think Arizona is going to be a, a, a you know a pretty good team. It, it probably won't be as good as it was last season, and you always wonder how a team is early in the season, but uh, they should be a, another a pretty good basketball team. I, I just wanted to add, we support. Bounties on Sean on Miller. Miller. So <laughs> I know you some do. of those. Oh, I know. For the Crosstown shootout, send, <laughs> yeah. them, send, send some names my way. Can, can we rent those guys? <laughs> you guys like that he's back at X? Like, you got, a, is it good? Um, uh, I, I mean, mean it, 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 he didn't he's have. He's a really good coach. So he's I a good coach. <laughs> uh, but, like, it doesn't necessarily do anything to, like, the juice because UC also has a new coach, so they don't have any history with each other. Like, like Mick and Sean. Apparently they somewhat, you know, became yeah, yeah. tolerable of each other, but for a long time they like hated each other's guts. So that UCLA Arizona thing was always fun to watch from the from the side. I remember like the first time Arizona played ASU, and like a reporter asked him about the rivalry, and he straight up said, "He goes, dude, like we were Xavier Cincinnati. Like this is not even close to to what we had over there." Yeah, until it's, until you get in a brawl and the guy leaves with his face bloodied, it's it's you know it's not really he got in much. trouble when when he first started here, Sean. He got in trouble because he basically he admitted shit about Cincinnati. Yeah, like there was the the fight when he wasn't the coach, and then he was like, "Yeah, I kind of liked it," and then he had a ball. <laughs> hey, I don't I don't dislike that. I mean, I love it. <laughs> Jason, if you like, if if you ever get a chance, it, that that thing is worth going to. If you get a chance to like, to be in Cincinnati when the shootout is happening. It's it's different. It, yeah. it, it, it's you know, it's it, they all everybody works together. Everybody's got to deal with bragging rights for the next year. You're probably going to come in if your team loses and your cubicle is going to be all, <laughs> you know, decorated and spammed like it is. It is an intense deal right up there with anything in college sports. Yeah, I got to get out there for one of those. All right, man. Well, come hey, as my guest. We really I'll appreciate it. Uh, hopefully you have a good fall camp. Hopefully the Wildcats win more than one game this year. So. Uh, you know, makes, makes your, I know it makes your job a lot easier if the teams 
teams are doing well. So we, we appreciate you jumping on with us tonight. And I'm sure we'll we'll be interacting and check checking you out on Twitter. Tell everybody where they can find you on Twitter and, and on 24 uh, 7. At Jason Shear on Twitter and then Wildcat Authority on the 24 uh, 7 network. Awesome, you are man. officially one of us. Like we, <laughs> we, we, we share a lot of similar beliefs. <laughs> I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks man. I appreciate it. Thank you. There you go, Dave. That, that was that was your guy. You wanted to you wanted to make that happen. He is he is one of us. Like oh, that, yeah. that I mean, that's a guy that is not afraid. Get in the mud. Like you want me- you want me- mix it up. All right, yeah. we'll mix I it mean, up. Like whether it's your your account or the official account, like we don't really like. We're not really the the provocateurs. But, like, if you're going to say something that's just flat wrong, I'm not just going to be like, oh, yeah, that's fine, whatever. We are the epitome of, look, don't start no shit. You don't want no shit. shit. Right, don't start (laughs) no shit, won't be no shit. Like, I I don't ever just go looking for somebody to pick a fight with. Uh -uh. But if you show up at my mentions ready to fight, or if you say some dumb shit, like... It's like the witch, that one Wichita State account that shows up in Bearcat Journal Twitter every six months. I'm like... You came to me. I'm now. I'm going to have to bury you. I, I didn't want to have to do this. I didn't ask for this today. But no, J- Jason. Jason's Jason's good. He's kind of been the the first and and only maybe guy that's kind of gone out on a limb and and kind of said what he thinks his school uh, where they stand in all of this and and it should be interesting. I mean, everything that I've read and heard says that the Big Ten deal is basically done um, and will be announced in the next couple weeks or so. So, you know, we'll see how much of that, as he said, ESPN takes or doesn't take. And then, you know, kind of what that means for the Pac-12. But uh, it's not going to be pretty. I just get. The, I think I just keep going back to. I get the biggest kick out of like the Big Twelve is like in in everybody in the Pac 12s mouth, and by not doing anything, like Brett Yormark said, we're open for business. You can take that for what you think, but he never said the Pac 12. And someone well, there was a, somebody that put that out there, like number of times, that, like yeah, that George said. Big 12 five times in his opening remarks or whatever. And, and like, it's Pac-12 basically like was a, never said once yeah. at Big 12 media day. It's like a second media day for the big, like, and you have just all <laughs> these people writing about it constantly about something that they also claim isn't that great. Like that'd be like us talking about Tulsa football all the time and writing articles about like, we, we don't view them as a threat. So why am I going to waste any time on them? Right. If you're not a threat, you don't spend a lot of time on things that aren't threats. Yeah. And like, why just... do we have fun with Central Central Florida Golden Knights? Like they're at least like legitimate. Like it, it's fun because well, it's fun because their fans are there. Yeah, but it's also like if they were Tulsa, we wouldn't care. No, yeah, I wouldn't care. Tulsa fans that. hate Cincinnati more than Central Florida fans do. Yeah, we just don't give a shit. We just don't care. We just don't pay. <laughs> like the the their their lady that writes for the the Kelly, Tulsa newspaper, Kelly Hines, has me blocked because <laughs> she kept talking shit about UC, and I would call her on it, and and she just finally was like, "I'm not listening to this anymore." Like, well, quit saying dumb shit. Yep. And I right. won't have to. I, I have no intention of caring what you have to say. But when you keep saying things like Cincinnati intentionally. Like, is ducking going to Tulsa? Give me a break. Like, it's just factually incorrect. You know it's incorrect, lady. Yeah, but, yeah, I figured, you know, I think Jason's picked up a lot of, of followers and, and yeah. from from the from the Bearcat side and probably a lot of Big 12 people because, I mean, he's, he's a Pac-12 guy who's looking at it the same way we are. He doesn't have, I mean, he doesn't care. He doesn't I mean doesn't matter to uh, him whether they're in the Big Twelve or the Pac Twelve. But I mean, if you're just going to lie about stuff, if you're just going to claim that 
things are true or not true or, you know, and don't think that people are going to call you on it and then get mad when, when, a, get when, a, when a fan base or a group of fans, like, get at you and claim that it's insecurity. I mean, I don't think anybody in the Big 12 is insecure of someone going to the Pac-12. I mean, maybe maybe that I eat my words there. Who knows? Um, but, like, don't write articles for a month on end about markets and brands and there's no value and why would anybody do this and then be stunned when when people take take exception to that right. and 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 end up in your mentions yeah i all these big 12 fans in my mentions you've been provoking them if you didn't for write weeks. anything about if you didn't write anything about them i don't think they would find their way to your mentions right the, the Big Twelve fans aren't searching out John Wilner. I promise. John, John, and John, the Johns must not have very much interaction with Big Ten and SEC fans. I, sh- I can, I can just say none. that. You, you can guarantee there's none. You can guarantee. Yeah, we should have joked around and asked him what do you think about Thick and West, but I think we were actually like twelve minutes over what we asked him for. Yeah. Uh, as it were, but so no, you didn't. You didn't miss out. Um, it's a good inside joke. I'm not sure he would have picked up on it and would have been like, I don't really have much to say. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, I think we kind of, you know, something's going to come in the next couple of weeks and we'll have something of actual news to discuss um, along those lines with the Big Ten and what their deal means to other programs. I mean, what their deal is going to mean is that everybody else is getting their ass kicked. Probably including the SEC. Oh yeah, I mean Dennis, Do- mean Dennis Dodd had a uh, article today, you know, basically saying the Big Ten is not adding any of these Pac-12 schools. Like the dollars just don't make sense. The only thing that makes sense is if Notre Dame would right. agree, then they take Stanford. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's the only that's thing, thing that makes sense. Right. And I'm um, still of the of the mind that I don't see no I don't see anything that's happened that's going that is making Notre Dame change their mind about independence, right? At this point, yes. but yeah, you know, we spent 35 minutes on on realignment ish topics. I think I think I could take my expert hat off and and move on to another subject now. Well, thanks to Jason Shear. Thanks to realignment expert Dave David Simone. Dave Simone is Dave Simone the realignment expert, or is David Simone the I think realignment? Da- I think Dave is the realignment expert. Okay, thanks to Dave Simone, realignment expert, and Jason Shear from Wildcat Authority uh, for joining us to talk realignment. Um, I, I do want to thank everybody. We had like we had like 15, 16 people that were that were watching me play Fall Guys on. Twitch today. People need so, to like, get, a, get a damn hobby. Jesus. Well, Christ. we were talking uh, <laughs> the, the first day of camp. <laughs> Fall Guys was just something I was doing while right. we were talking about the first day of camp. It's like uh, a fun little, yeah. It's a way for people to have like a a, a personal uh, text message, basically with uh, with you. You know, they get they get yeah. your undivided attention. <laughs> Listening to Chad is my hobby. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, get, get, that's why I said get a hobby. <laughs> I, I this is I needed, his hobby. I didn't think I needed to preface it by like a good one. <laughs> um, but okay, you so go? You, we're go camp, man. We just started camp. We gotta talk camp. I, we're not gonna make him wait a little bit. We're not gonna, we're well, gonna drag it you, out. What else did you want? to we were going to talk about the disrespect thing, but I guess we'll do that after camp. Uh, yeah, let's do that after camp. That's more of like a, a I mean, people, we got the first day of camp. Uh, so you were, you, you were <laughs> obviously, I'm, you're not the first one to call me that tonk, tonk so, yeah, I take no offense. <laughs> he's talking to everybody else. Oh, I thought he was talking to me and you. <laughs> no, he said he, I, he would never waste countless hours listening to these guys. Yeah. When he consumes every minute right, exactly. of every piece of content we do. <laughs> exactly. But uh, All right. You, you fire re- away. I, 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 there's some stuff I won't get into because it's in the practice report. Right. Well, that's what I was going to say. You wrote an article. We want people to read it. You have videos up with Coach Fickle. 
with Josh, with Arquan, with Will. Um, so, you know, please go to the site, check those out. Let's go big takeaways from first day, sights and sounds, outside of what you have already put on paper. Uh, the one thing that I did put on paper that I'll talk about, I know that Mike Cummings has been very high on on Joe Huber. We saw it in the spring. We had people ask questions like, what, what, this guy's running with the twos. Some of it at the time was kind of, it, you know, there, there were some injuries. There was some shuffling around. But every once in a while, Dave, you know what happens when there's some injuries and there's some shuffling around? Somebody unexpected becomes like a favorite of his coach, right? Sure. And I think that's what happened with Joe Huber throughout this spring. He answered the bell every day. He was good in practice. And, and when you have a new coach, like that, that provides that level of opportunity that maybe isn't there with the guy that has been in the program for a long time. Right. Um, I was I a little shocked to see him with the ones at right tackle today? <laughs> maybe a little, a little bit. bit. But we've known that, that there's been interest in getting D.O., Dylan O'Quinn, inside and back to guard. You know, it's also we can't, we can't it, hear you. It's also the first day, so you're going to see. I think we're going to see a little bit of maybe mixing and matching until you sure. maybe a week or so. It's day the, one, man. There's like a, there's a lot of stuff. You're still at the time of looking at things, seeing how guys mesh, seeing how you know you got you we you know we feel like it's close, but we still got a month till the season. You don't need to necessarily lock in on your five starting offensive linemen today. Here's something else I'll say, and and outside of that flop, like, it, but it, you know, through camp, it was Huber at, at right guard and O'Quinn at right tackle. Um, what we saw today was just essentially the carryover of what we saw from the spring game. Like, if you look at the corner rotation, that was that was what we saw in the spring game. If you look at a lot of the stuff that happened, like with those first units that were out there today. It was a continuation of the work that had been done in the spring. Some guys worked their way up the, the roster. Some guys, you know, hovered. And then you allow them to carry that over into the first day of camp, right? Like, okay, this is where we left off. We hit pause with the spring game. Now we're going to hit play again. There might be uh, longer-term plans, you know, Sure. Yeah. There might be longer term plans where they want the boundary corner, like Luke talked about in, in our video, to end a certain way. But we're not there yet. And right now, I think Arquan is probably your, your best option at boundary corner. So until those other guys beat him and move him over to the field, then you're going to see him at boundary. And I'll tell you what, the best corner I saw today was the guy that was with the ones over at the field. And if you, you want to find that out, Dan Horde mentioned it, so I guess we can talk about it a little bit. Justin Harris was really, really good today, starting field corner. That's the, the thing. It's like you're going to – you you're replacing two corners, a safety, two linebackers, two defense. Like there's going to be shifts from day to day. Yeah. Like the guy – and the guy that's great today, Justin Harris, he might – Somebody else might be great tomorrow, and then they're great a second day in a row, and then just I mean, like it's just you're replacing guys that have had major impacts and taken a ton of snaps. So you can't just assume the first guy they put out there today is they're just going to hold that spot down all of camp and throughout the entire season. This is also a continuation of uh, some of the stuff we have talked about when adjusting your thinking after the past two years. Because guess what? When we got to camp last year, there weren't any questions. Like, there weren't really any questions. Like, maybe a little bit on the offensive line. Um, you know, what was – they were replacing a safety. You know, could, could Brian Cook and Javon Hicks be as good as Derek Forrest and – 
um, James Wiggins, the right. answer was yes. But we, but even in that case, we had like legitimate yeah. tape knowledge of what those players were. Sure, absolutely. We have no earthly idea, <laughs> right? What Sammy Anderson, Jacob Dingle. What Sammy Anderson is, what Jacob Dingle is, what Justin Harris is. Brian you know, Threats. We don't have a damn clue. Todd bumped us. <laughs> so the coaches need to find out info on all of those guys. Yeah. In a ones and twos type of situation. So there's going to be movement. Like, it makes no sense to be like, oh, Justin Harris had a great day. Let's not see how anybody else can possibly do at field. He's, he's, just, he's the guy. Right. They can't do that because they need to know, okay, maybe Justin Harris is great, but what if he gets hurt? Who the hell are we putting in then? Right. You got to see who else can hold their own or not hold their own with the other ones. Yeah. And like I said, Justin Harris had a surge at the end of the spring and vaulted his way up to that number one field spot. Like There are moments at fall camp, even inside of camp, that we will see that will catch up people that are in certain positions will catch our attention and right. we will report them as best. Well, we yeah. Can. That's the job is to, to watch to, it and talk to, about it. Today is not really one of those days. No, I mean, look, you're on campus. I will say this. Um, hold on, we got to thank you for the donation, Richard. Uh, Rich, Rich, hold on, before you go, Richard knows the game. He missed half the show. You want your question answered? Pop a donation, and we'll stop talking about whatever we were talking about and answer your question. And I said I wasn't going to answer the quarterback question because it's in the article. But he paid for it. So but he, he paid for it, so now <laughs> I have to talk about it. That's how this shit works. The reason... We can be bought, people. Look, the reason that I can't talk about it because it's on the in the article that's VIP... It's because people paid for that. Richard just paid for it. So who am I to tell him no? That's right. Now everybody thank Richard and, and drop a, some, a donation uh, to make it worth my while. <laughs> uh, ben was the better overall quarterback today. It looked like Evan was maybe trying to like aim the ball. Guide or like it. guide it to where he wanted. He was trying to be perfect on day one. Um, you can still donate more, Dave. You can, it's okay. You can subscribe oh, yeah. twice. <laughs> um, I, I thought Evan was trying to guide the ball a little bit today, aim it a little bit today. Uh, ben had some really nice throws, especially in one on ones. Uh, Tonk with the two dollars to thank Richard. Appreciate you, Tonk. Tonk. That's a new thing, Dave, the tongue stamp. I, I heard, I heard. Okay. Um, but Ben threw two picks. One of them, not totally his fault. He was a little – he threw a heater uh, up in the zone to, when, to, when to he, Leonard Taylor. Just, just needed like a, not a change up, but maybe not the not the full gas. Yeah. he, he I mean, maybe just the two-seamer instead of the four-seamer. He threw the four-seamer. Um, it, it went through Lenny's hands and Jacob Dingle came down with it. The other pick, he was rolling to his right. He tried to check down across his body. No, like a Michael Penix throw? <laughs> it's not, not like crazy, like, but, you know, he's, he's moving right. He tried to throw maybe three yards to his left. Yeah. And Ivan Pace read it, snatched it. And took it to the house. And look, man, if uh, th if there's one way you're going to put yourself lower in uh, Luke Fickle's uh, mental yeah. capacity, it's turning the ball over at quarterback. Like, it's one of the things that Dez was just so outstanding at, was so awesome at was not turning the ball over. It was taking care of the ball and not giving up possessions and not putting the defense in bad situations because of dumb plays. And everybody wants to like, wants to call Ben a gunslinger. 
and only talk about the cognitive, the, the positive connotation of calling him a gunslinger, right? I just, I mean, I don't even know if I would call him a gunslinger. I just think he's got a strong arm. Yeah, but, I, but I'm talking like... The, like, but a, that, gun, a, gunslinger like a gunslinger is gunslinger. like Brett Favre. That is just like, I have so much confidence in my arm strength that <sighs> I'm going to make this throw that I shouldn't make. Like, I don't know if that is... Ben has sure. a little bit of that. A little, but I mean, that's not the first thing that comes to my mind. Um, but when you watch him every day in practice, there's a couple times a day in practice where he takes the ball and tries to fit it somewhere that, you know. I, mean, granted, I have not seen him uh, yeah, in practice much because, I mean, he was gone and then he, you know, wasn't. He backed up Daz and then he right. was gone and, and now, you know. Um, I, I just, like – he takes some risks and that's guys with that type of arm just have that in them a little bit right like it's just ingrained in who they are that i'm gonna i'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to take a little a little little gamble here and fit this one in a tight spot right you just have to you have to kind of weigh like how much of that you're willing to accept like right how, how much are we willing to accept that there's going to be some throws that he can squeeze in and we that other quarterbacks can't and we want him to stay aggressive uh but we also know that there's interceptions <laughs> might come with it thank you dave you don't have to do it all. we were just kidding man but thank you so much and just 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 pulling your leg a little uh but if anybody else wants to donate like feel free um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't let dave stop you Right. Um, I still haven't seen a penny of any of these donations, by the way. So yeah, you get your check every month. It's not added on. It's all part of the. You don't see any different. Like if the sub count goes up, fifty subs. Like it's all in there. <laughs> it's all in there. It's all in there. <laughs> I need to get a lawyer redo my contract. <laughs> it's well, in the five. That's it's why all, I only gave it's you. all in there. That's why only it's like the the grant of rights. That's why I only gave you a three sentence contract. It's very yeah. tricky. Uh -huh. It's very tricky to work around that yeah. legally. Well, <laughs> the, the sponsorships I'm working on for the new show, I'm, I'm going to be getting the, that banking information myself. Apparently, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> There's no problem with that. I don't want to have to pay taxes on that. <laughs> <laughs> you said I was going to pay taxes. <laughs> If it goes into my account, I have to pay taxes on it. Yeah. Um, so it can go into your account. That's fine with me. <laughs> oh, no, um, no, Jeffrey. I definitely will not disown you for that one. And, and in, a, in a week or two, I don't think it'll be, I don't think his lawyers are going to be that good. No. <laughs> not, <laughs> that they, not that they up. have much to, much say in the matter at this point. Yeah. Um, some of the freshmen and we knew like we knew Ken Willis um is a guy that we like uh at least like I I really liked what I saw from Ken Willis through the spring um you would like this one Dave he had a a freshman tight end make a catch and they were going towards the sideline and Ken Willis makes contact and his helmet comes off the tight end's helmet comes off Maybe because Ken Willis's hands were attached to the face mask. <laughs> like, <a>, yes. <yeah. laughs> but they go down right on the offensive sidelines. Okay. Yeah. And the defense starts to run over, like there's, you know, there's going to be a little, a little rumble. And Renfro and O'Quinn are the first two on the scene. And the defense kind of went. I think we're all right. <laughs> yeah, we, Ken we, Willis versus walk on. I, I don't think we're gonna. I think we're gonna escalate this too much. Yeah, it's it's just the first day. We don't need to, to start any fights today. Yeah, like uh, we're gonna be strategic here. We're gonna wait until the rumble is over on the defensive sideline. Yeah, and it's like practice nine at higher ground, and you know someone sucker punches somebody else because they're just tired of being out there and. And all hell and, breaks loose. And O'Quinn and Renfro aren't there ready to right. like fight. Yeah, if it's on the other sideline, you, you got a good like five seconds before they right. show up. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't think so. I, those two are nuts. I don't think I'd want anything to do with a rumble, like a, a bar brawl breaks out. I'm picking whatever side those two are on. Yeah, I, th- I think uh, when I was leaving, uh, when I was leaving fan so council, la- fan, fan council, council last night, uh, Renf- I think it was Renfro and maybe um, Cam and maybe someone else might have been with them. They, Cam they is had- hard to miss. He's six nine. Oh yeah, yeah. I know. Pounds. I knew. I know it was Cam. <laughs> <laughs> they were they were leaving about the about the same time I was out of the out of the parking garage. So, but yeah. So jo- jokingly at the end of Squat Fest, Justin was standing there and Rimpro was kind of like walking by him, and I was like, you know, hit him, thinking he would just like bear hug him, like you know. And Rimpro actually like put a shoulder into Justin's back and wrapped him up, like and shoulder, Justin is still like. I'm sore. Like hey, I, 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 I gotta give it to to Justin. I mean, he he made it there today. He didn't have vacation planned. Yeah, can't, can't speak for the for Friday at Higher Ground. Maybe his vacation doesn't start until uh, you know Friday or Saturday. But c- c- big congrats on on getting out there. It, we were joking around today about when I I I joked I said to Fickle, people are saying five of your best eleven defenders might be linebackers which is what Justin wrote in his article. Yeah. And he was like, look, you know how Luke is. I was like, I thought I was safeguarding myself because if I say it, he's going to like, who's saying that? You? What do you know? You don't know shit. But when I said people, and when I, I was like, was somebody else that writes in the market? He's like, oh, yeah, then, you know, it's right. That's right. Yeah, five of our yeah. best players probably are linebackers. Right, yeah. But if, <laughs> we just, if we just said it or you just said it, he'd have been like, you have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. It's like when I when I asked him about Jake Renfro being a center, and he said, "Who said he's a center?" And I kind of was like, "Ron Crook told me <laughs> <laughs> uh, at his signing day press conference." Ron Crook actually told me that that he was a center. Um, but yeah, that was but uh, like Kalen Carroll, Ken Willis. Um, I can't remember all these freshmen. There's too many names in my head today. Well, so there's a yeah. It's day one. It's day one for the media too. Well, I mean, you know, these new guys like they just got here. Or they, you know, they're okay. So what? What else from camp? Not in the article. Um, uh, if I if JQ I said- Hardaway, people were asking about JQ. They wanted a little JQ content today um, because Arquan was with the ones. Uh, JQ was was rotating with the twos with Shep and and mostly with the threes, um, but ultimately, like here's what's what's kind of fun about the the defensive back situation is even when you get down to the threes, there's still some good wide receivers that they have to like deal with. Oh yeah. So JQ on on one snap when it was in press coverage. JQ's probably not watching. Like those guys are, it's their last day on campus for a while. They get up in the morning and go to higher ground. My guess is he's not sitting around uh, watching this. Maybe he'll listen to it tomorrow on the drive to higher ground. Um, But he got up in the receiver and I don't remember who it might have been. It might have been Wyatt Fisher. I, I can't remember exactly. But he got up into the receiver. And played press man coverage for like seven, eight yards down the field. Like it was a legit battle for that receiver to get off. And when he finally did, he, he made a catch about seven or eight yards down the field. But I'm like, you know what? That's you know, to see a freshman be that physical and that like understanding of this is what they want from this boundary corner role, I thought was really uh, a, a good sign. For JQ, uh, Ethan Wright almost had a pick today, uh, but it got pried away from him. I joked that he still had his running back hands, um, and that he was going to have to, you know, have to pick it up uh, when the ball is in the air. But he looked he looked pretty good. Like as you'd expect, just watching Ethan Wright, you know, as much he liked running into people as a running back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um. So he's going to be – it's going to take a little bit. I don't know what to expect from him this year. I think that's difficult. 
But I do know, like, watching him at safety, he looks very natural doing it. Yeah, this definitely seems like more of a a long-term play than to expect anything this year, right? Yeah, and it's not like they're desperate at safety. You know what I mean? Like, no. they're pretty, they're, they've got a lot of talent. Like, it, it's unproven outside of, of Hicks, but I thought Jack Dingle or Jacob Dingle had a really good day today. He was flying around. He was around the ball. Him and Threats were splitting uh, time with the ones. I thought he looked good. Uh, right. So, um... uh, Miles Montgomery. It's the first time I've really seen this in football, Dave. He did a Euro step. <laughs> like, he took a long stride, planted his left foot, and then, like, hopped back the game, to the right like he was finishing what, a layup like, on the other side of like the He's like, what they call the running backs? Like, they gave him the dead leg? He, yeah, he gave him, it was, a, it was, a, it was, and, you know, I've been at basketball events for the entire month of July, seen a lot of basketball. I looked at Justin, I was like, was that a Euro step? He just Euro step? <laughs> like, yep, he sure did. <laughs> just, he, as, as, you know, I would say he Sean McCoyed him. It was a it was a a sizable Euro step. <clears throat> it wasn't like one of those like you see guys in the layup line, they'll do the like the the, bait, the little half Euro step. Oh yeah. It wasn't one of those. It was like a full He was trying to get to the rim from the foul line without yeah. Uh, Manu, Manu Ginobili would have been like, mm, pretty nice Euro step there, kid. Not kids. bad, not bad, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of just some of the other stuff that didn't. Oh, Oliver Bridges, another one that was pretty impressive today uh, of the young crop. Did anybody, I mean, I don't know what they did. It's, the, again, first day. Um, you know, kind of just no going pass. off. What? No pads. Oh, right. So it's like, it's hard to talk about offensive or defensive line. Um, you know, anybody just from an athletic standpoint stand out to you in kind of that defensive line group that we talked about last night on the nightcap looking to see who maybe can can take a role as more of an edge rusher? Um, Jamal Williams had a couple nice reps today, but he was also going against a third team tackle that had no chance yeah of of getting in his way um i don't think you can take too much from that uh they, they did the the o line d line like they're in like they do the spider pads now i guess you're allowed to do those from day 1 it used to be yeah. you couldn't put those on till day 3 uh i guess there somehow there's a change that allowed them to do it in day 1 so it was a little a little more physical than your typical day one, but not like the full the sure. full deal. Not like it won't um, be on like Monday. Yeah, like by well, what? Yeah, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, by Monday, and it might even by be by Saturday um, if they changed like the the acclimation period. Um, you didn't you didn't see any like full on jail breaks to the quarterback. Um, right. I did see an impressive uh, CJ Doggett playing nose tackle, chasing the ball sideline to sideline at one point, like effectively was like, oh, that's a, another young kid that like, you know, got the chance to be here for the spring um, is, is looks pretty comfortable with, with where he's at now. You know, he's battling a pretty deep position group with, Briggs and Dominique Perry and Dante Corleone. Um, but he he flashed and caught my eye on a play. Uh, Quincy Burroughs is wearing 12, Dave. Oh. And I think it's – I think he's he's going to be a stud. That kind of guy? He had a catch today, went up, caught it right here, had a defender come from the back and smack, you know, nine times out of 10, it's, it's an incomplete pass. And the ball did like his hands moved, but the ball didn't move. And he brought it right down into his body, completed the catch. I mean, 
there was a, a pretty good chance if that thing is swatted away, there's guys, a bunch of defenders around in that vicinity. It gets picked or popped up into the air, and who knows what happens. But he ran a crisp route, got his hands up there, met the ball where he should have, and squeezed that bad boy right into where it was supposed to go. That I was impressed again by by him. Big, big question. How how was the kicking game today? How are the specialists? Uh, we didn't really see any field goals today. Um, some punts, uh, but nothing like nothing, nothing in day one really on the kicking game. I imagine that won't be until day three or four out at higher ground. We'll start to see. You know, they'll have you know a kicking period early, and then have the kickers you know, late, ready to – Ryan Coe, ready to come in and put one through the uprights in two-minute drill. But we didn't I, we didn't get much of that today. I know you tweeted uh, from the beginning with a little hashtag, hit him up. How was the music selection today? How uh, often, early. How, how often did you hear uh, The Purge? That's a, that's a higher ground thing, so we haven't heard The Purge okay. yet. I said uh, Brady uh, – uh, I sent Brady a, a message with a song that I think that uh, the other about a week or two ago that I think the, the boys might like. So I'll be interested to to hear if I hear it when I'm out at higher ground. So they moved practice up a half hour today without really telling anybody. Um, so I generally get there about a half hour early, and I so I got there for the start. So apparently I missed. Brady has the red like digital, like looks like a boom box. Boom box, like the North, the San Francisco yeah. 49er guy boom box from the yeah. playoffs. Apparently there were um, individual player introductions. Oh. On Brady's boom box with a microphone as guys were walking in today. We've gone from attention training in 12 degree weather and snow to inter- individual Player introductions for the first day of, of fall camp. Yeah. Bearcat football is 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 a is a hot damn thing right now. It's in a good place. Sorry, I've got I feel like I'm congested. No, but uh but no, yeah. Head to the site. Obviously, Chad's got more of his thoughts on day one. Got up some some very quality videos, you know. Luke's Luke's video will be interested to see how many of those lovely faces we see out at higher ground next week. So easy for day one for everybody to come out. I, I know three people that'll be there a couple days next week. I can't really speak for for anybody else. Um, <laughs> one of them will be me. I'll be there every day. You'll be there every every day. Uh, I am hoping, every day it's open. I'll be there. I am hoping to be there uh, at least once, possibly next week, and then uh, maybe you know we don't want to give out the deets, but somewhere uh, on the weekend. So, but uh, you know, I think that kind of you know for day one, what's what's the appetite? Not a ton, you know, going on. A lot of and if maybe, you're. If you're here and you're not a member and you're wondering, every day I'm a practice, there will be a practice report on the site. There will also be a nightcap. There will also still be podcasts. There will be videos from practice every day uh, that I'm there that we'll, be, that we'll have on the YouTube channel. Um, so stay dialed in here on the YouTube. Make sure you're a member to Bearcat Journal. Uh, there's no better time than now because it doesn't get any more comprehensive uh, than than during camp when it comes to what Bearcat Journal provides to our members. So the, the, the and the Bearcats are still hot. You had Coach Fickle on Pardon My Take this morning. Did you listen? It was pretty good. I did. He just did like a seven minute interview on ESPN uh, tonight. Yeah. So you know the Bearcats are are still uh, still darlings. Media darlings right now. Well, I, the one thing I couldn't believe from the PMT interview was that they did not, they did, you know, I figured they would talk about Fick and Vrabel's relationship. 
But they didn't really do the whole like, you know, who would beat up who wrestling bit that everybody everybody always does. And you know, I wanted to hear Fickle, you know, give his take on, you know, how bad he would whip everybody else. Yeah. But, it was very funny though when they asked him if he what appendage he would cut off for a national championship. <laughs> yeah, they just said, you know, would you cut off Vrabel's to win a national championship? Well, of course, it's not yeah, not absolutely. his. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine though the nightly battles between those two, as he kind of alluded to? Just two of the biggest meatheads ever. Oh, like. The term football guy. What happened to Aaron? We lost Aaron. I think he's doing his like. He said there's like seven kids at his at sister's, sister's house, house. and yeah. he's on vacation. Like that doesn't sound like much of a vacation. No, that sounds terrible. <laughs> that sounds like more work than staying in Athens. Yeah, and one one of them was asking where. Their mom went, and I said that she went to get cigarettes and wasn't coming back. <laughs> She's out. She she ditched this popsicle stand. Um. All right. Should we get the? the I can't. Oh, the computer kidding. died working on it. Still listening. All right. Uh, Aaron will have to timestamp this in uh in retrospect at a, okay. la- at a later date at a later date he'll get back and work on the timestamp. one hour 11 minutes 30 seconds full yeah. camp 1 11 30 aaron <laughs> write that down end of fall um, camp. end of fall camp uh day one day one camp recap um you mentioned respect and it, it's it's interesting because they are getting a lot of it um Pardon my take. He was on uh, Sports Center. He's he's was on Rich Eisen. He appeared on this channel, which is you know wildly successful. Yeah. Um, multi multi million dollar media conglomerate. Yeah. Um, but Luke is uh, is out out in front, and I think. The media is catching on with Luke that, like, he's going to give you a really good interview. He's going to be candid. He's going to be as honest as, you know, as, as what he feels is necessary. You know, he's not going to tell you who the starting quarterback is, but if you ask a question, you're, you're going to get a pretty straightforward, honest answer with Luke. But we're starting to see a lot of the, you know, the preseason stuff come out. And we're not going to, I don't think we're going to see a lot that have Cincinnati ranked. Um, I think you'll see some, but I don't think it's going to be the majority, uh, you know, of, of the polls you see come out. When you look at, you know, at what uh, PFF put out uh, a thing the other day on their top seven group of five quarterbacks for the, the 2022 season. And you didn't see anybody there which could easily be just because we don't know who is going to be the quarterback. So how do they know if the quarterback is one of the top seven quarterbacks? Um, I jokingly on Twitter have been putting the little like, you know, taking notes from the office, you know, the guy taking notes. Um, But ultimately Dave, there's no point in in getting worked up over this stuff, right? Like, it's not a sign of disrespect. It's a sign of this team lost nine guys to the NFL, and that's not how this works, that they're supposed to just not skip a beat and be every bit as good as they were uh, coming into the next following season. Because in a for a team like Cincinnati – this is supposed to work in a simple pattern, right? Build, 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 hit the peak, go all the way down the hill, build, 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 build. build. And that's what people expect, right? Like that that's not disrespect. It's just precedent, right? Yeah. Typically, you know, and I'm not even sure that I can use the word typically, but Teams that are in their same vein historically have not had nine guys drafted. 
And they certainly have not had nine guys drafted and then replicated or come close to replicating uh, that same success. So, you know, you're taking away, you know, arguably the two best football players in university history, one offense and one defense. You're taking away a running back that ran for well over a thousand yards and scored almost 20 touchdowns. You're taking away the quarterback's top target. You're taking away a Jim Thorpe award winner and one of, if not the best leaders, uh, at least of the fickle era and maybe in a long, long time. You're taking away the most dominant defensive lineman, I would say in the conference last year, you're taking away the best safety. Uh, yeah, a, a, a safety that ended up being a second. Like you, you're you're not just. This isn't just like a normal graduation, where a team had a nice year and they had three or four guys drafted on day three. So while we are in the weeds completely and we have confidence and we understand and we know who these people are, if you're covering the sport on a national level and you think the Bearcats are going to still be pretty good, you either have an understanding of, of similar to us of the roster as a whole or a, or, and you just have like endless faith in Luke fickle. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but like nothing about what is happening now without seeing a game or a practice outside of those two things should would lend you to believe that this is like still a top 20 program or team this this unit is right. still a top 20 team so if you don't think and, they're in the top okay. 25 like that doesn't bother me because if we have a lot of questions that we're waiting to see answered why wouldn't someone that doesn't cover the team have those questions and, and maybe more? Right. And is also skeptical because what we think they can do hasn't been done before. Outside yeah, I mean, those those Boise teams had a couple, you know, back-to-back years. But, but they I, never – but it's just a different let me, thing. Let me finish. Like, let me finish. Let me finish. I think what people forget – is that last year was the end of a back-to-back run. Because they were equally as good, maybe not equally, but really damn good in 2020. Went undefeated in the regular season, almost beat Georgia in the Peach Bowl. So that was the, the back-to-back, right? Like that, and they had a bunch of guys take a COVID year, that, you know, it was unprecedented because you had, you know, fifth and guys that had played five and six years of football. Uh, that's not normal unless you're Garrett Campbell, who showed up at practice today uh, looking great. It's always great to see Garrett. I love I love seeing Garrett. I also uh, I'm supposed to give a shout out uh, to Karen Kelly, who watches and Let's Garrett know every time that we mention him on the show. She texts him. Right. So uh sorry, I was sidetracked there. I no, had to work right. Karen. I had to work Karen Kelly into the show I, today. You, you okay? Yeah, my got my cat allergies bothering me. But. No, that's because you have a cat that likes to hang out like in your face. I know. I'm, well, I'm, an, <laughs> I'm, I'm the idiot that is allergic to cats and yet has two. Has those, cats, so. yeah. That's not um, smart. But no, like what you're saying, like 2019 UCF, back in like the next year after 20, the after run. their two great 17, seasons. 17, 18, yeah. 10 and 3 didn't make the conference championship. Yep. And that's still a really good year. But like they think they finished 24th. I don't know if that was their final regular season ranking, the final ranking of the entire, you know, after all the bowls and everything, but like. You just you had two unbelievable years in a row, and the main, all the main actors, for the I mean, are gone. 
Yeah. Like, you're replacing the number four pick in the <laughs> fucking NFL draft. Right? Well, pardon, my, pardon my French. Who has gone into an NFL camp and has the wide receivers going, can't get open on this dude. Like, this like, dude's legit. <laughs> none, of these other, none of these other teams, they were, they were replacing good dudes. They weren't replacing that. Alec Pierce, a second round pick, has gone into an NFL camp and, and looked like a star because the dudes he's going against aren't sauce. Like he's getting open at will in Colts Camp. No, I, don't, I wouldn't go at, at will. I mean, there there's an article today where they're putting Stefan but they're putting Stefan Gilmore on him. Right. Like he's not being broken in against third team dudes. No, they you know. they're having to put their number one guy on him to, to slow him down. Because they need him to produce, so they're yeah. making him go against other good players that he's going to see on a week in and week out basis. So like we make it's a we little have hyperbolic. We have fun with it because you know but you know the, the, the bad part is is like the bad part from a fun standpoint is like you can't go. You, you went to the playoffs. You can't really play the disrespect card anymore. You're going. You're, we're going to the Big Twelve. We can't really blame the AAC for shit anymore. Like, you know, I I only I only um, I think the disrespect card only fits in one area anymore. What's that? And that is uh, recruiting rankings. Look, yeah. Luke Fickle thinks the kid's pretty good. Guess what? He's probably Odds are. Good. He's probably pretty fucking good. Like this is a guy that's recruited four and five star players for what 15, 20, 15 years at Ohio State. He knows what they look like. And uh I I would think there'd be a lot more people in the business, in the industry, going, you know what? I'm gonna stop doing, I'm gonna stop undervaluing the kids Luke Fickle recruits. But I think I'm gonna start valuing a little bit more what Luke Fickle sees in a player. Right. Like if, if, if you see is willing to take a commitment from a guy in May going into his senior year, maybe we need to take another look at him and try to see what Luke sees in him because his track record of not only identifying, but also because that supposedly is part of the, the development is supposed to be part of it is supposedly part of the rankings process, not just what we see now, but what they we can be, which cracks me up because who the hell are you to project what someone's going to be in the NFL um, from a, from a 16, 17 year old kid. Um, but like, if that's what a, a team that has won, a, you know, I guess we'll take out the COVID year. They would have won 11 or more. Multiple, yeah. But they're 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 in they're in they're in essence going for their fifth straight eleven plus win season. So if Luke Fickle thinks that that kid is good, maybe we should also think that he's good. It, it, but here's the thing, though, G off. We learned it was G off today on the Twitch stream. G off. I have a, um, a I have a G off in in my life, so I can I can get that. I can get down with that. A lot of these guys are four and five stars because of what I just talked about, but at other places, right? Like Alabama recruits a three star. Guess what? In the next update, the kid's not a three star anymore. Right. Ohio State recruits a three star. In the next update, guess what? That kid's not a not a not a middle three star anymore. Yeah, I, it's, it's I, not if I'm going to talk disrespect. Even... That's where I think. There's one right, and it's not even that. Out. Like when they commit, it's like, oh, they this kid is a three star. What? Joff. It's Joff. You didn't didn't you tell me today that it was? How did you tell me to pronounce it today? In, Jeff, in the Twitch Jeff, chat, Jeffrey with two Fs. Joffrey. Is he the butler of on Fresh Prince? <laughs> Jeffrey. But. uh but no, it's like those programs will show interest, and then you know you always see it like mid, high three star has a good whatever rivals camp or something, and uh, uh, several big time programs offer him, and now he's a four star. Yeah, because you know what? There's no way that 
Ohio State, Alabama, Clemson are offering a three star. Right. It's got to be a four star. I think Luke Fickle deserves more. So it's not even like respect. when they commit the rating changes, it's when they show interest. Yeah. But when they commit, the rating change. Like it, it, when they show interest, the rating changes some. And then they commit and the rating changes more. They get the double bump, which is illegal in volleyball. Right. No, I mean, I think I think you're right there, but I also think that, like, some people, until you see is in the Big 12, and sh- I'm not even saying, like, wins the conference, but just, like, shows consistent success, I think you're always going to have a group of people that look at it and go, yeah, they're good, and they were, but they were good, they mind their they mind their situation better than anybody else, and we'll give them credit for that. But we're not going to give them credit for doing it against the teams that they did it against because, yeah, you know, anybody you know, I'm being someone else. Here. I know, but like, but like anybody could have done pick, that. Second round pick, second round pick, third round pick, third round pick. Like at some point in time. He's better at evaluating than you. Oh, for sure. I'm just talking. I'm not even talking about like the recruiting element of it. I'm talking about just like the team. That's what I'm talking about. The team can't do it again because, you know, you know, or they, you know, I'm not just, I'm just not going to care as much because they're, they're still doing it against the two lanes and the Tulsa's and the, you know, whoever's. Yeah, but I don't think they signed the Big East when they were doing it against Pitt and West Virginia and Syracuse and. Louisville and whatever. Yeah, it was still the I, same I, shit. I, 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 I don't know. That was, it's just such, it's a different world. It is. It's a different game. Twitter wasn't even a thing. <laughs> like, so you, Fair. You, know, you had no idea Fair. who was, res- unless it was on like a message board. You had no well, idea. I, who, a lot who of was, it at the time who, was ESPN was working behind the scenes to put a dagger in the Big East. Right. So they shit talked the Big East on the air. Right. Which back then was really like I mean Twitter was around then, Dave. It wasn't wasn't like like Al Gore hadn't invented the internet yet. Twitter started in like 07, 08. Like it but it wasn't like a huge I know. Thing. But yeah. like 9, 10, 11, 12, those are all the years I'm talking about. Well, we were good in 9 and then it went downhill. But they trashed the Big East. Yes, the bit the ESPN did is what I'm saying. The yeah. narrative even then right. was, well, those teams aren't really all that good, you know. Oh yeah, that part hasn't stopped. When it gets to the Big Twelve, it'll be well. That's the Big Twelve without Texas and Oklahoma. Oh, right? for sure, for sure. So, I, I so to get back to the original point, like I, I, joke around with it, have fun with it, like we're doing. I wouldn't take it too serious if, you know, that the AP top 25 comes out and you sees in others receiving votes or, or whatever the case may be. Like, they're going to have a chance to go to Arkansas. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is, like, none of it matters because if they go to Arkansas and win. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, the the, the it, question it, is answered, right? It, yeah, I mean, it, it's like, it's wild just to think, but it's like, you can one week you can talk about being disrespected, you know, if, if that's the slant you want to take. And if they go to Arkansas and win, instantly you could talk about we're going undefeated again. Yeah, back to the playoff. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the funny thing, right? If 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 they go to Arkansas and win, then the conversation goes to uh we're gonna need Arkansas to like to be yeah to be yeah, ten and two to be Notre Dame twenty twenty one yeah yeah beat beat Alabama or Texas A and M like don't don't lose some bullshit game that you know that you yeah, should don't lose to Ole Miss on the road like whatever the problem <laughs> I can't believe we're already talking about it but like the problem this year compared to last year is last year nobody knew Indiana was gonna suck. This year, everybody. This knows year, Indiana's everybody knows Indiana's gonna suck. <laughs> so, 
So yeah, not... at least at, at least there was some plausible di- deniability that Indiana might be like a. They were in the top twenty-five. Yes. Well, they had like a... they were actually there were some places they were what like top top they were what seventeenth or fifteenth like, or somewhere what, in there five and one six and one in the COVID year uh, beat yeah. like Michigan and Penn State the same year for the first time ever. So they were getting like a huge bump, and it was early, and yeah, and then they won two fucking games. <laughs> and I'm not sure they're going to win more than that this year. No. The, well, I mean, that Mike and McFadden's not there, so well, I mean, how could they? Clearly. <laughs> what else you got? What else do you want to get to today? Well, uh, I don't know. Um, let's see. Well, if you don't know, like. Oh, I mean, uh, we, we are we ready to go like totally off off topic? We can do whatever the hell you want. Like we've done an hour and a half, a phenomenal hour and a half show so far. So like, uh, whatever direction you want to go now, um, you know, my think... requirement, Dave, my requirement for these things, we go like ninety minutes of good content, and then if it goes off the rails from there, like you're staying around at your own volition, peril, right? Right. You know, once we start to like. Go sideways. Yes, yes. Um, we're just going sideways. I, he- I heard some, you know, obviously I've signed my life away as part of the fan council. Yeah. But I heard some interesting things last night. Some, uh, we got to meet some, we got to meet assistant coach Mike Roberts. <laughs> I love that man. And I three really and him. three of the ladies coaches, which I did not know that one of the ladies coaches, uh, Played, at, went to my alma mater, is a vol, won two national championships, and was on an Olympic team. So did you guys just talk UT the whole time? Basically. Her and I just, well, we were in these little, like, almost like a speed dating type setup. They put the coaches at tables and small groups went from table to table. And once I found out she was a vol, we basically talked about Pat for our whole, <laughs> our whole allotted time and, and other volunteer the other players. other people were and, like, this is some bullshit. The and then another, another one of the assistant coaches who is from Cincinnati played at Rutgers and went to the national championship and lost to Tennessee. Right. We got some some lit, some ballers on, on the coaching staff, but they they were all very nice, very very uh, accommodating, very personable. So excited about that! But uh, heard some interesting things, some some possible um, additional revenue streams that might be coming soon. And then uh, we we will have a not next week, but the week after, we will have a special guest. Uh, on the BCJ pod who will be coming on to talk many subjects, in, including uh, an announcement that is that you should look for in the next, I don't know, 10 to 14 days. That's soon, Dave. That's soon. It is. It is soon. And we'll probably be back on Thursday nights at that point, but we'll see. Yes, he he is. Uh, we we talked about that. I, I asked Wednesday or Thursday, uh, and he said either one. So if that's the case, look for that on the 18th. Luke Fickle's message today: What is this year's team? Wait and find out. Like we'll see. <laughs> we are one month from the start of the season, Dave. We are. Today is exactly one month today from the start of week one. And Dave is excited. I'm ready for some football, man. Um, All right. Any updates on the show? Anything you're willing to oh, give us uh, on the show? I think we mentioned it last night, but we are, I think we're close on a name. Uh, so just, just, I think it's a good one. So we just got to make a decision on that. I'm in, uh, currently in contract negotiations with a possible sponsor. There you go. Have talked to another possible. Sp- Actually, I talked to two other. One sponsor that kind of jumped in. One potential sponsor that jumped in the the Bearcat Journal mentions today, and I was like, "Well, if you want to do that, there's sponsorship opportunities." Um, and then another one that you know I've I've presented some info to. 
So that that could be uh, exciting. But uh, you know, no, ready to, ready to get going. Sunday, whatever. What is that date? Sunday the fourth. Yeah, Sunday the fourth. Sunday the fourth. So one month from tomorrow. One month, you know, one calendar month from today. We'll have a game yes. result. We talked about let it fly a little bit last night at the uh, at fan council. Everyone, you know, excited excited for season two. I'm, I'm interested to see if, if they if the episodes are, are longer. What what you know what they do this year different from last year. A lot of a lot of new personalities probably to introduce to the fan base. I just want to know if I'm going to be involved. Like Justin got in last season. He did. So, like, is Chad going to be part of season two? Like, you want to you want to win a second Emmy? I mean, I, I can talk. To, I can talk to some people. Oh, I, that's those conversations have already happened. You can't <laughs> you can't do it yourself. You need other people to be like you know, you know you sh- you know who you should have. You should do a little. You should have like Chad Brendel on there. Yeah, that's what I tell them. Right, but they don't. If you're doing it yourself, they're going to be like. This guy is an egomaniac. He's full of himself. Like we don't. Yeah. Like, but if if someone that, that they don't things. know, if I'm like, if I say, you know, you know, he's like the kind of like the. But actually, what I would do is I'd be like, you know, I'm kind of like the the voice. <laughs> yeah, you would try to get yourself on. You would do exactly what you're telling me not to do. No, I'm the voice of the fan. Chad is the vo- <laughs> Chad's just another media guy. I'm I'm like the the people. People that Chad, you want. Chance just a guy with a website. Like, exactly. Do you want to have him on, or do you want to have me? Exactly. On? Um, but I do want to mention because we can we can get into this. Like, what is your what is your favorite candy bar? That's a tough one. I I, I have a favorite candy bar, but I have a sense you're going to tell me it's not a candy bar. I mean, I'm not a big candy person in general, but I'm not either. I don't so, love so a like, lot of different. What candies. is what is your favorite candy bar? A Snickers ice cream bar. I mean, it's not a candy bar; it's an ice cream bar. But it's a it's there's Snickers elements in it. It is candy well, that well, just well, has sure. ice cream. Right. I I don't I don't eat a lot of candy bars. If I had I mean, to pick a candy bar, I would go Snickers peanut butter. My my like, favorite. That would, if, I, that's I, a good one. That would be my favorite. My favorite is the Take Five. Take Five is good. And so you know, you know what the Take Five is? It's the you know chocolate covered pretzel with peanuts and caramel. Yeah. I found out this week that the Dairy Queen Blizzard of the Month is a Take Five Blizzard. Ooh. And I have been diligent on. For several weeks now, diligent on a morning walk and or an evening walk and watching my diet, knowing pounds just melt away, knowing that I'm about to enter into my prime season. And this is not good news for me because is there a Dairy Queen close to you or literally two minutes away? Oh, that's bad. Like do I you could pass it on your way home every day. No, I do not. Uh, okay. I mean, I work from That's home. That's better. And when I go to and from my son's school, I do not have to pass it. But I literally turn passing off... it is a nightmare because <clears throat> when you pass it, <clears throat> right? But I literally turn off one one other road, and it's basically there. So I have a question. So I, I can. How is I that can any ha- different? How is that any different from me, like in a Snickers ice cream bar? You getting. A oh, taker with, I'm with just, ice cream. I'm just saying that I it's not something that I ever thought would, would like normally you have to go to the store or the gas station to get a take five, which I won't do because I'm not I mean it's a road trip item for me. Like if we're driving anywhere and we stop, yeah. I always get one. But it's not something I'm like seeking out. Now that it's only for a month, it like draws your attention in because you have to try it and you have to know how good it is. And I feel like I could eat one every single day. And so we had a we had a Dairy Queen off the exit that my my old house used to be. Now I live one exit up, so I don't ever use that exit. So we haven't been to Dairy Queen since we moved. Now we have a a UDF 
uh, that Kelly and Kelsey frequent for milkshakes, but I it doesn't really move like candy, chocolate, whatever. It doesn't move the needle for me a ton. Uh, I would. I'm I am upset because I want to eat them so bad, and it would just. Have you had one yet? Like we're three days in. No, I haven't. I've been, I've held strong. So I think next week, like when we open the show, you're going to have to just Just like be eating it the whole time. I mean, mean, it's going to last what? 10 minutes, five minutes, seven minutes. Oh, I mean, I I guess it depends on how big I get like, yeah. I mean, if I'm like, just put one in your largest fountain cup. <laughs> do you have do you have a thirty two ouncer? You're like yeah. Bob Huggins and bourbon. Just whatever your the biggest drink I can get, just do that. And I always get like double toppings. I'm a, I'm a big double toppings guy. So you would go like you can. I, I didn't even know that was that was an option. I didn't oh, even yeah. know you could do that. You can go Blizzard, take five, double toppings. Like, oh yeah. I mean, you could go. Here's you could do Blizzard, take five, and I'm also usually a chocolate ice cream guy, and not the like, vanilla. Yeah, the vanilla. Like my, is typically... my typical go to is with the, whether it's a Blizzard, an Arctic Swirl, whatever your place calls it, is chocolate ice cream with Oreo, double Oreo. Okay. But you could go take five, double topping, add peanut butter sauce, and. I mean, who knows how many calories that son of a bitch is? Chocolate ice cream, thirty-two ounce cup. Chocolate ice creams, big gulp. <laughs> quad <laughs> toppings, double peanut butter sauce. Like you just pull when you order, you're like, "I'll give you the cup when I get to the window," and just hand them a forty-four ounce <laughs> from like I, Circle I just, K. I give them a cup. I'm like, just charge me whatever. It yeah, costs to fill whatever this, this costs. Here's the 44 ounce cup. Put all that stuff in there. $27 blizzard. <laughs> That's diabetes. <laughs> that is like that is instant Wilford Brimley diabetes. <laughs> this is well worth going off the rail. I'm simple. I I I, I don't really like candy bar. Like I, it's just not something. Like I, I don't I, really. I, I'm really just it, a Reese's person. Like I don't really eat any other candy that's not chocolate peanut butter. Like if Kelsey, like Halloween or Easter, um, I'll eat like Twix. I like Twix a little bit. Uh, it, it, the the one thing that is insane to me at uh, iHeart, um, when I go do shows. The Twix are always stale because apparently nobody in that building likes Twix. So I can't, like, they have a vending machine and you're there for, like, four hours, right? (laughs) And, like, by hour, like, you know, you're in the middle of the four o'clock hour. You're thinking, maybe I'll go get a candy bar. Like, to, to, you know, work me back up. Give me a little bit of a a sugar push to get through the, the second half of this show. And I've gotten Twix three or four times and and I'm like, Taryn. The Twix here suck. And he's like, yeah, nobody eats them. Like they just put them in there, and nobody eats them, so they sit there forever. And then you get them, and like the 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 wafer or whatever okay, is stale. But, okay, then I'm I'm gonna ask you, if you know that, why do you keep getting them? Well, they moved. Okay, so <laughs> I thought maybe like. So you're when telling they, me the vending machine guy outsmarted you by just moving them and making you think? No, 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 these no, 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 new, no, no, no. What, I'm, what I'm saying flips? is. They used to be on one side of the building, and the the candy machine was like a hall. You almost could not get there and back in a commercial break. So I figured maybe it was just like, you know, the salespeople or whatever didn't eat Twix, so the Twix got stale. But like now that the the vending machine is right there in the middle of everything, there's an opportunity for more people to enjoy the candy. And still, and they no, do not. They do not no, eat Twix. No Twix takers. No, not right Twix, not left Twix. Like hey. they just don't eat Twix at iHeart. Uh, yeah, so then I, I have to I've either never, go. I've never been a huge fan. Like I, I feel like the the what do you call it? The cookie? You call that? Yeah, the, in there yeah. cooking. 
It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of like eating cardboard. And especially if it's stale. I'm not a big I, 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 I'm not if a it's huge, stale, I agree. I'm not a huge You've been getting Twix all. from the from the iHeart vending machine. That's why you don't like them. Crip Keeper coming in hot with, with the whatchamacallit, which I think... Have is, you had the new one? No, no but I mean, like, I, 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 I've, I've liked them in the past, but again, I'm a... I'm a, you know, I'm brand loyal when it comes to my soda and my candy. They have, um, they have a new one. It's called, I think, a Who's a What's It? Come on, are you serious? Yeah, and it's actually pretty good. Like I, I've gotten it a couple what's, times. What's uh, different about it? I don't even know. For, for just, someone that says they don't like candy, you sure? I you drive get, a lot. Like I'm Twix, coming Twix off four, of four times. You've had, you've had a Who's a What's It? That's in like a four-year period. That's in like a four-year period. <laughs> You I've been was, filling in for Mo new. for a long time. You said the Huzuma what's it's were new. They are, and I've been on the road a lot doing <laughs> AAU stuff. And again, sometimes when you stop in a gas station, you're driving eight hours. Gas trying stations to keep yourself also awake. have like little containers of carrot sticks and, and water. Yeah, let me know when that keeps you awake on a nine hour drive. <laughs> mm, this carrot really gets me going on. <laughs> Hey, I've, I've tried. The, I don't think the it's the can- I don't think it's the candy bars. Twice. I'm not sure it's the candy bars that you're that you're eating to keep you awake. Uh, if I had to guess, it's it's something else. No, I, I candy bar, maybe a, a 44 ounce Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, the the, the what you call it things I've tried twice. They're 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 decent. I, you know, I haven't had a what call it in ages. Yeah, I don't. I don't do any of like the quote unquote like sugar candies. And I've also, I, I will let you know. The I mean, they're all sugar I've gotten, candies, but like you know, like the yeah, Twizzlers, Starburst, Skittles, like yeah. none of that stuff. The two times I've gotten a who's a what's it or whatever it's called uh, are the times that uh, I've wanted to get a Snickers uh, peanut butter, and a lot of places just don't carry the Snickers peanut butter. No. Yeah. Huh. That's interesting. I, I've, I know. Like, I, not even an empty box. Like, sometimes you'll just see an empty box, and you'll be like, "Shit, somebody, somebody got me. Somebody beat me to it." Uh, but there's been a couple places. Well, here, here, just, here's one. Since, since we're on this, me. since we're on this subject, I want to pull something that my mom sent me the other day. I have no idea who made this list. It's from Mashed.com. Okay. Well, apparently, whoever made the list is somebody that works at Mash. Right. They ranked 42. I don't know if this is all. 42 Graders flavors. Okay. What do you think was number well number number one? I think it's black. The yeah. raspberry chocolate chip thing. Yeah. Yeah, the black raspberry chip. Number two, Buckeye Blitz. Must be Ohio State fans. Number three, mint chocolate chip. Do you like any of those flavors? I am not a mint chocolate chip guy. Neither am I. I used um, to be like all all the way in on the uh, black raspberry. Now it's too sweet for me. I, I've had it. I don't hate it. Mocha chocolate chip at four seems like an absolutely insane ranking. I think that's a... Um... That's a female uh, driven market. Like you're telling know, me that I know Kelly loves like mocha chocolate. Like Kelly loves right, that like, stuff. But like there's people that either don't drink coffee or don't like coffee. So like, but you're telling me that's their fourth best flavor is one that I just would never even try. Yeah, I think that's I think women eat the the shit out of that thing. Cookies and cream five, that would be higher for me. Yeah, the cookies and cream. Uh, Here, I'm a peanut toff, butter toffee I'm a chocolate I'm, chip at six. No way. Gross. No way. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that. it's bad, but like top six. Okay. I, I'm not a toffee guy. I don't like Here, toffee at all. Here's here's where where I come in. Number seven, peach. To me, number one graders flavor. It's very good. It is very. Good. Oh my god, it's so like so good. They whatever whatever they do with that one, they nailed it. They're they're fruits like the peach. Strawberry, and I had the key lime pie the other day. Oh man, we had at the I, we went on Friday night to Bearcat night at the Florence Freedom game, 
and had the uh, had some boldly bearcat, and that was the that original was... boldly bearcat or the new one. The new one, not but as, you can't get the good. original. It's not as good, but you can't get the original anymore. Yeah, key lime pie was like super tart. That actually comes in at eleven, which I key lime pie is maybe my favorite dessert. Super tart and like the pie crust pieces in it are still crunchy. How do they do? How do you do that? You want to? They're they're not our sponsor right now, so I can I can say this. You want to really mess with a friend? Go to Urban Artifact and get one of these spicy key lime pie tarts. Yeah. And put it in your cooler and let somebody just grab it. Get a beer that they're not expecting to be spicy. It's not spicy, Dave. It is hot. Like, <laughs> you don't like, yeah, it's like the difference between like a mild and a hot wing. Like, it is by the time it touched, I did this. By the time it touched my tongue, my entire mouth feel was numb and the back of my throat was on fire. Like you, that you, you That's gotta not, tell like, somebody. I you like, tell somebody. I like spicy food a lot. Like I don't, I don't think I would enjoy like a, I don't need my beer to a be spicy. spicy. Yeah. No, it wasn't, it wasn't spicy. It was, oh my God. <laughs> but it was, it was one of those things. There was like five or six people in our house. Um, we had some family over for dinner. Aaron, did what you try they, it? Jeffrey, yeah. What if, what if they can't read? It's a flavor explosion. Like, like it burns. I mean, it wasn't that. I mean, it burns. It's hot. Like, again, it's, again, some of us don't think the Sprite at McDonald's is spicy. We've been over this. Jeffrey, you over, don't understand what I mean by the Sprite at McDonald's is spicy. Jeffrey over here in the comments <laughs> is assuming that this person is not a is is not a Kentucky fan and can actually read the the can label. Look, I, I, there's a lot of things that say they are spicy that you don't expect to exactly be. Holy shit! What was that? It, it was, was hot. Aaron. It was, it was an explosion of flavor, and it was un wildly unexpected. Did you? Was wildly it wildly unexpected? Was it enjoyable? I didn't hate it. I certainly didn't love it. But like, you can't. You're not going to be like, I'm going to get a six pack of these buddies I mean and just. I drank what a I guess I drank a four pack of, of the sixteen ounce cans like yeah but was, not there like was four of them there was four not, different yeah. kinds did you drink them just consecutively like you just, or like you drank them over a month period oh I drank them over a probably a month period yeah yeah I'm mean, I'm talking about like you go to the store you get a sixer or whatever and like yeah there was two left and I had two in a row but I mean it wasn't the, but okay. only the only the spicy key lime pie was the one that was like whoo. What the hell is that? The it other was, ones were like you were you're talking about, like no, that, unexpected, but a, a flavor burst. Yeah, but that one in particular was like an explosion of flavor. Like, what did I just drink? So, yeah. I'm not a vanilla guy, but having Grater's vanilla at 13 is also an egregious ranking. Someone, someone told me, and I don't remember who told me, but uh, that particular you're right, flavor. Geoff, you're right. The McDonald's is spicy. The sprite, and it's way too carbonated. That's what I mean. Like the flavor of it is like. You can come. <laughs> someone, someone told me that the uh, the the spicy key lime reminded them of a uh, clamato or what it, the the clam. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. The the clam drink. Yeah. Yeah. It's hot. It's hot. I mean, yeah. It wasn't just like, hey, there's a little spice in here. Is what I'm saying. It wasn't it was. like. It wasn't like. Ooh. I mean, it was. They, if yeah, you read the it. if you read the can, it was made with poblano pepper. <laughs> <laughs> so not even like jalapenos, like even spicier. Pepper. Right. They they did go for for some kick to it, but I mean, I didn't drink it. Like, oh, I think I should drink some milk now. It wasn't. It wasn't like that. Well, I didn't do that. It <laughs> just was way hotter than I expected. It. Have either of you jokers had the Grater's Midnight Snack? No. No, the one with the pretzels and. Yeah, brownie they bite. Love pretzels. Oh yeah, peanut butter cups, chocolate covered pretzels, and brownies. So it's like Grater's attempt at uh, Ben and Jerry's. Of, Correct. Yeah. We have a. I have a pint of that in the freezer right now. Actually, it's strong. Thanks, Aaron. But yes, I thought you know we were talking candies and boldly Bearcat twenty. Clearly, this was a done by an Ohio State fan. If you're going to put Buckeye Blitz at yeah, two 
and boldly bearcat at 20. Come on. Like strawberry at 21? No way. That's like top that's a top 10, top 15 flavor, man. Well, we really have forget disrespect for the Bearcats. Dave, we're gonna need Dave Simone's definitive Graders ice cream rankings. Top five? No, I mean like you know, one to forty-three. Oh, geez. I have to try. I haven't tried them all. I can't rank well, them all. I know that's what I'm saying. I do have I do have an in there. Maybe we can get them as a sponsor. Maybe we can. Their uh, their owner and my father are uh, fraternity brothers and friends from college. See, this is another reason that I think your co-host should have been your dad. <laughs> I'm all set on that one. <laughs> Think about how rewarding I, it would I be. I concur. Think about how rewarding you, you it would be. You concur with who, Chad or me? me. I concur with Chad. Uh, it <laughs> definitely should have been your dad. After having met your dad, thousand percent, it should have been your dad. <laughs> Think about when you look back later in life, how rewarding it would have been to have uh, done a successful podcast with your dad. Your dad- it, would not, it would not have been a successful podcast if he was a part of it. <laughs> Your, your your dad could have been the Italian poppy of the Bearcat. Yeah, nation. he would have been. He would have been the BCJ poppy. <laughs> he comes in for a, for a virtual five, and is <laughs> yes. it would have been outstanding. It would have been that was the be- one of the best ideas Aaron's ever had. No. I think Dave's dad would do it. I was like, oh my god, atrocious, oh my god. atrocious idea. You're, you're so Maybe wrong. for you, but not for us. Not for oh, no. everyone listening. <laughs> he would have he would have angered a lot of people. I can assure you of that. Isn't that I it mean, happens? Controversy sells, man. Come it on. Does. Yeah. It does. But no, he does he goes to all the Bengals games. He, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have even worked anyway. So <laughs> just record at 7 a.m. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure. Uh, record at the tail. You guys like to hang out at the tailgate, like when you get back to the car. Yeah, just set I mean, up. Set you, up a, you, could, a, you could do like a, you could do a segment with your dad. You could come to the tailgate and do like a uh, whatever you know, G, like Gene's a, Gene's pregame minute, and just get whatever his thoughts are <laughs> pregame for one minute, and then just put we can put it up on, you know, it doesn't have it could be whatever pops into his his head. I'm okay with that because I'm there. Like right. it, it could happen. Yeah. Worth it. I think you that- you're right. Here's your problem, Dave. If we do that, he's going to become a star in this world. That's fine. He's and you're not star- going to be able to deny. He becomes a star off of one minute of content over six weeks of an, of a calendar year. Then, Hey, awesome. And then you're gonna have to have him. He could be, on yeah. He could be. Why do I have to fly? Yeah, he can be a guest. What time does he leave to go tailgate? Like eight. Uh, you're not doing the show that early. I know that that's not happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hi, hi, honey. I'm gonna do a, a podcast now as soon as our kid will, wakes up. <laughs> yeah. After, well, after, after being gone twelve hours yesterday. And Will wakes up on 11, right? Well, he, he wakes up uh, much, much earlier. Yeah, and, and early. No, no, I'm not talking about yeah. when he wakes up. I'm talking about the level right. he oh, wakes yeah. up. Yeah, he's he's. Uh, there's no easing into the morning. In our Will house. doesn't wake up like... Uh, no, he Will wakes, wakes up, up like, let's go! He w- let's like, go! We, we do like wrestling. And <laughs> uh, I don't... Right now, it's not called a body slam. It's called a kaboom. And so, like, he wakes up and instantly is like, kaboom! <laughs> like, I picked him up from school the other day and opened the door to his classroom, and he just runs up to me and wants me to kaboom him in through the table. At the school. At so school. Bills, so he's a Bills fan. Well, I mean, I did grow up as one as well, so. <laughs> he's Bills Mafia for sure. Yeah, he's, he's something all right. You're gonna have to start showing him video of Bill's Mafia, and you know. No, because he'll want it. He'll like want to do it. <laughs> he already does. I don't. He I don't wanted you to put him through a table at school. I don't. I don't need that. Oh boy. All right. 
I think we had our half hour of fun. We did. We did. And Snickers ice cream bar is still a candy bar. It's just a candy bar with ice cream in it. It's an ice cream bar with candy substances in it. It's a candy bar. Anyhow. We'll I, think I, might, I think I might go get a Take 5 Blizzard right now. <laughs> right now? Are they still open? I mean, I don't know. It's 10 o'clock. I don't know. Is DQ, like, is, does, does DQ roll like that? Open at 10? I don't know. Sonic does. I could go to Sonic and get a Sonic Blast. You could. But they don't have Take 5. They don't. So there's your dilemma. That's right. Sir? <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Stay tuned to Bearcat Journal. Camp reports every day, videos every day, podcasts every night, shows every night. Like We got it rolling right now. It's my favorite time of the year. We'll see you next time. It's the BCJ Podcast presented by the Holy Grail right here on BearcatJournal.com.